If you've been plagued by abysmal Wi-Fi, either by having to constantly restart your devices or by having to sit in weird positions in certain parts of your house to just get more than a bar of signal, what options do you have? Do you send your neighbor a batch of your special brownies hoping they will share their Wi-Fi password with you? Do you look for the most expensive device on Amazon, which may or may not resemble a certain Dark Lord, and hoping it doesn't turn on you? This might be an option, but sometimes the size or layout of your property can still render this approach ineffective. The answer may not lie in the average consumer market, but rather in the prosumer slash enterprise market, namely ubiquity. Ubiquity devices can be found in extremely large scale deployments, such as hotels, sports arenas, and conference centers. But ubiquity have quite a selection. So which ones are right for your deployment? You may also feel that they are going to cost you a kidney or you're going to need a PhD in computer science to set them up. Thankfully not. Let's try and understand how ubiquity can solve your Wi-Fi woes. Ubiquity's foray into the home market came in the form of Amplify, a central unit with two mesh points that could be set up entirely from a smart device app. While Amplify takes away some of the complexity, it isn't nearly as scalable or customizable as the Unify range. So let's just concentrate on Unify for now. The first thing you will notice is that there isn't a one device solution like your ISP may have provided. Your typical consumer device will be a combo device comprising of a modem, router, switch and wireless access point in one so that a single device is responsible for connecting to the internet, routing wired traffic, and propagating and routing wireless traffic. While this is cheaper, there are many limitations to this approach and just simply won't work in larger deployments. For instance, if the Wi-Fi on the device stops working, but everything else works, you would need to replace the entire device. This is not how Unify works. Like with any enterprise deployment, Unify splits these roles or devices into smaller ones. So the router is one device, the switch is another device, the wireless access points are other devices. Then there's the addition of a special bit of software called the Unify controller. The Unify controller is the brains of the operation. It can run on Mac, Linux, Windows, Docker, and can even be installed on a Raspberry Pi. The controller doesn't even have to be installed on the same network and can just be a virtual machine on the internet. As long as your Unify devices can address that controller, that's fine. The controller is where you would set up your entire network and where all of your devices would get their settings from. It's like a designer for what you would want your network to look like. The controller then provisions your network based on your design using the devices that you have. For example, if you set up a wireless network inside the controller, the controller will look for some Unify wireless access points to make that happen. In the controller, you would also define settings like DHCP and your IP range, configure settings for your wireless networks, viewing the status of your entire network and much, much more. As soon as you plug in and power on a Unify device, it starts looking for a controller to adopt it. Once a device is adopted, the controller then sends the configuration to the newly adopted device and an ominous blue glow from the device indicates that it is now connected. The adopted devices will keep those settings and cannot be adopted by any other controller unless they reset. Once all of your devices are set up, your controller can now be switched off unless you need to do one of the following. Number one, sending updates to your devices. Number two, if you have a guest portal running on your controller, you may have seen a guest portal if you've connected to a public Wi-Fi that needed you to enter some information before giving you internet access, like in a hotel. And finally, if you are using either deep packet inspection or a mesh network, more on these in the full article. The controller provides a central place to manage all of your Unify devices. While you can use Unify alongside other devices, having the full suite gives you a complete overview of your network. It also is accessible via an app on your smart device and can be accessed via the cloud. Some of the great features about the controller is again that it's available on nearly all platforms. You can also upload plans of your property, then draw the walls onto your plans. You can even set the thickness of the walls and what materials they're made of. Then, once you're done with that, place your Unify devices where they are and Unify will calculate a theoretical coverage based on your inputs and scale. This can help detect dead spots and ensure that you have correct coverage. I really can't believe all of this is completely free of charge without any subscriptions. There is even live chat support inside the controller with an actual human being on the other side. Ubiquity support has helped me in the past and the support staff in all my correspondence has been exceptional. If you don't care to have the controller running on your machine, Ubiquity makes something called a cloud key. All it is is a low powered Linux machine, which kind of looks like a stick of gum, which has the Unify controller running on it. One thing that sets this device apart, like the majority of Unify products, is that it can be powered entirely by PoE or power over ethernet. You could plug the cloud key into a free PoE port on your Unify switch, and it'll both be powered and connected to your network. Awesome. This is another great feature of Unify products. 
almost all of them can be powered entirely by PoE. This saves having to run both network and power cables to your devices. You can imagine a hotel that has hundreds of unified devices and having to run both power and ethernet cables. PoE makes this much more manageable. If you don't want to buy a PoE switch, Unify does have power injectors which can be used. So once you have a controller set up, you may want a router. Enter the Unify Security Gateway or USG. The USG may not have the best naming convention, but the device is super duper. After plugging in some internet, the Security Gateway will handle all the routing settings that were set up in the controller, such as DHCP and firewall rules, etc. The security gateway can also do things like deep packet inspection, which as the name suggests, inspects your network on a packet level. With DPI enabled, all sorts of traffic statistics can be found, such as where the majority of your traffic is going and what protocols are being used, etc. Using this information, you can figure out how to shape the traffic on your network to ensure a good network experience for everyone. Now you would need some wireless, and for that, Unify has a wide range to choose from indoor units, outdoor units, devices to link buildings together, you name it. The most common one would be the UFO-like UAP-AC range. You would put as many of these in your building to get sufficient coverage and Unify will take care of the rest. So if you have just one SSID or wireless name, you will not have to manually disconnect and connect to another access point when you get near it. This is handled according to the implementation on your client device and should happen automatically. Some devices, for example, will switch when they find an access point with a stronger signal. The UAP AC line will offer the best overall performance as long as you can run a network cable to each and every access point. Now I know there are some instances where you simply cannot run a network cable to all devices in your network, which is where the Unify mesh range comes in. Unify's mesh devices use wireless access points which can communicate with each other wirelessly to extend and provide network access. This allows a daisy chain of Unify mesh devices to provide access to even the most difficult of places. As mentioned, the Unify controller will have to be online for this to work properly. What it does is checks the signal across the mesh and makes sure the client connecting to the wireless network is connecting by the best possible route. Now there is a performance hit the more hops your client has to take, but between having that and having no internet access at all, it's a no-brainer. You can imagine an implementation like an outdoor park where running a cable to every single device just isn't possible. Unify's mesh devices are also weather resistant, which makes them ideal for outdoor as well as indoor use. So up until Ubiquiti, there was a major gap between regular consumer devices like your Netgears, D-Links and Belkins and the super extortionately expensive brands of Cisco and Meraki and others. Now, I would never put my name to a brand unless I truly believed in it. And after using Unify for a while, it has made me realize how dreadful consumer Wi-Fi is. Ubiquiti came out with some great quality access points at a very disruptive price points. They are a big step above consumer grade access points and fairly close in quality to the big boys at a much lower cost and with no ongoing license fees. For home use, they are an exceptional value with a product to address almost every need. While there are some learning curves, there's a wealth of information out there to get you going. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We've got a series of Unify networking reviews and guides coming up as well as some awesome ongoing giveaways. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.